What's up, everybody? Joe with ECRM here, and I have with me today Steve Caldwell, the co-founder of Swiss Rosti. Uh, Steve, thank you so much for joining us. I love your setup. It's funny. This is going to be fun. I so appreciate ECRM taking this in. Well, um, so for everybody, a uh, little background. Uh, Steve was a recent participant in our food service frozen uh, efficient supplier introduction. So we're going to talk a little bit about his experience with that, uh, as well as just, you know, uh, the, the where virtual technologies are playing in retail and food service um, sourcing these days. But before we get into that, Steve, can you take us through your company? Tell us a little bit about your products. Absolutely. And Joe, once again, I appreciate it very much. Well, uh, we hit shelves nine months ago in August 2019. But this was a dream uh, that started about five years ago. I was out of country with another company I had. I was at a private catered event and two chefs came into this private home and they took a bunch of shredded potatoes. They put them in the bottom of a pan. They started filling it with different meats and cheeses and vegetables and then covering them with shredded potatoes, frying them on both sides and then quartering these and plating them up with some sauces and some salads. And I've been virtually in, in many different countries and I'm a foodie and recreational chef. And, and so I always go to the most hole in the wall areas to really dive into the culture of food in the region. When I tasted this, it gave me goosebumps. The simplicity, but the flavor and everything in between, and then the explosion of the fillings coming out at the end, I was like, what is this? Uh, so I came back home, told Lori about it, and I, I, I said, we've got to go find this. She goes, what is it? I said, I, I really don't know. It was actually in South America, and they called it a batata, a filled batata. As it turns out, uh, the two chefs, one was a chef, one was a mechanical engineer that had lived nine years in Switzerland, and his cousin had just graduated from culinary school, and he said, what am I going to do? And his cousin said, I've been eating what they call a Rosti every single day for the nine years in Switzerland. Let's do that. I think it'll be a big hit. So uh, about three months later, when I couldn't find him anywhere here, I actually reached out to them, secured visas for them, and flew them up to this kitchen for a week. And we made these, what is now the Rosti, uh, and the evolution of it. So fast forward about five years. It was uh, about a year and a half ago. It was uh, almost two years ago. It was May 2018. The Oregon State University Food Innovation Center right here in Portland that's headed up by Sarah Massoni, who is the New York Times touted as having the million-dollar palette for bringing specialty foods to market reached out to Lori and I and said, hey, I hear you're trying to fill a potato. Uh, if there's anything we can do to help. And I said, absolutely. I've never created a product before. But I just, you know, we had several different private dinner parties over the years since I tasted it. We went from a, uh, a uh, entree down to a handheld. Everybody that tasted it just kept saying, you've got to bring this to market. And I'm like, I don't even know where to start. Fast forward, we go into ideation, October 2018, at the food incubator. Lori and I are there every single day. Eight weeks later, we launched these flavors at their winter tasting event where all the local supermarket chains and regional chains come because they, they value you know Sarah's products that she develops uh, in their kitchen with their food science and the nutritionals and everything else. And uh, you know, it was eight weeks from napkin to tasting at the winter tasting event. And the next day, we signed 12 stores here in Portland. And, uh, and I, I reached out to the VP of sales that sent me the vendor agreement. And I said, uh, John, uh, thank you so much. It was great meeting you last night at the event. I don't even know where I'm going to make these. And he's like, you know what? I'm so excited about it. I know you'll figure it out. So we went to Fancy Food a year ago, January, into San Francisco uh, under the Oregon State banner uh, in Incubator Village. We got best product uh, in Incubator Village. And from there, we signed Whole Foods uh, and several other uh, regional stores. Uh, it's still not having a uh, place to manufacture it. So Sarah told me, she said, listen, it takes a specific machine to actually fill a potato in mass. You can't keep making them in your kitchen. And I said, what's the name of the machine? So she tells me, I start reaching out. Within two weeks, I find a manufacturer that was just relocating, had built a brand new 150,000 square foot facility, and they had a bunch of these machines. NDAs and confidentiality agreements later in 30 days, I was in front of the CEO telling him my story, and, and he told me, we're doing this with you. We're going to partner up on this. Uh, and five months later, uh, August 2019, uh, we hit shelves and we're close to 500 plus stores now. Uh, our velocity 
uh, increased a little over a thousand percent since hitting shelves. Uh, and now with Whole Foods on a regional basis and several other uh, big change, Albertson, Safeway, Kroger, Fred Meyer, uh, Gelson's and Kings and Balducci's up in the Northeast region, uh, and then several other stores that are rolling out in the next six months, uh, we are just absolutely on fire. Uh, and what's happened during COVID, and it's, uh, you know, we can, uh, we feel, first of all, for everybody uh, in the food industry that has restaurants and uh, the labor and everything else. And it, it just, it, it touches our heart. It really does. Um, and so they've, the, the, the sourcing of, of food has now gone to supermarkets and online. And our presence on the shelves has really brought comfort because originating in Switzerland in the early 1800s as peasant food, their families would bring Rushdie around the table or Rosti around the table, uh, just as Lori and I do with our own five children. And at least during these times, it's just something that everybody relates to. It's crispy potato. It's uh, it's, uh, it's 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 you know it's it's warming to the you know to the to the belly. Um, it's comfort food. And if that's something that that helps everybody, at least around the dinner table, um, we're so happy to be a part of it. QBC then reached out to us uh, at the Fancy Food Show in New York last year. And the online sales with them have obviously just been through the roof. And now we're, at, we're one of their partners, one of their top selling uh, products on QBC. Uh, and we're on again this Sunday, uh, Mother's Day. Uh, featured on In the Kitchen with David again. So, uh, and I'll be calling in into that segment as well, talking with David uh, uh, in person since they're they're currently not having on-air guests, which I love to be in studio as well. So fast forward, this is where we're at. Food service is now becoming a big part of it because it really, it, it goes everywhere. I mean, it's a, it comes out of the oven just like you made it homemade yourself. And uh, I hope you can attest to that I, uh, when I sent you the samples. Well, you know, I definitely can. And what's funny is, Except in my case, it wasn't coming out of the oven. I, uh, I'm a typical, uh, as I told you, I'm a typical uh, apartment dweller in New York. I have not opened my oven in three years since I moved in. And when I did, it didn't work. So I didn't have an um, air fryer. I didn't have anything else. So I'm looking at my George Foreman grill and I'm thinking, can I? And I put it on the George Foreman grill and you know what? It was amazing. It just it oh, crisp it crisped them on the top and the bottom, <laughs> and it was soft on the inside. And I had the chili cheese ones, and uh, I was just blown away. It was delicious, like you described it before. You bite into it, and then all of those flavors kind of hit you right after when you start chewing. And uh, and you know what? You should look into uh, the George Foreman Grill cooking. I mean, it was just. <laughs> You know, because the top and the bottom were very crispy, and sure. then the inside was of moist, course. so it just ended up cooking it so well that now I, I can just use that. But uh, yeah, a really, really great job. I look that forward so to trying classic. the other ones. And uh, but yeah, so that's that's how we do it over here in my place. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome, Joe. <laughs> so now, so so now we have right coronavirus hit. People can't travel. Yeah. You can't go to these trade shows that right. you're, you know. So how did you find right. out about the ESIs? How did, how, and, and what were your thoughts around it when you first heard of them? I got to tell you, um, it was, it was Expo, right? We literally shipped all of our, uh, our whole booth down there. We had just the day before in the afternoon before they canceled it, the final announcement, um, shipped all of our frozen samples and uh, close to 2,000 pieces that we actually quartered. So we had about 8,000 samples and had just shipped those. They had just left. And then the very next morning it was canceled. Um, so we were like, Okay. Uh, so of course I, I started, you know, just posting on social media the, even more than I do, uh, did some videos in the kitchen, um, and really started, you know, reaching out that way because with the stores that we had, and then also reached out to the stores that we had set up appointments with, um, through the special or through the, uh, uh, the expo, uh, portal. So I'm, I'm like, gosh, uh, other than that, we can continue to service our stores, but where do we go from here? Well, it was a lady named Heather uh, reached out to me and she said, hey, you know, because of the, you know, the, the cancellation of the show, um, you know, we're hosting these ECIs through ECRM and Range Me and we're premier on, uh, on, on Range Me, right? Uh, and I, I said, well, what does that look like? 
And she said, well, I don't know how many retailers. Um, and then she said, because you're a premier on Range Me, uh, we, can, uh, we offer a discount. And I said, well, okay. So we went through that. And we started weighing the, you know, the cost of the show and, and uh, how many buyers that we could actually get one-on-one -on -one with from a virtual standpoint. And I just, I started thinking about it. I'm like, wow, I mean, this, this really uh, could have some traction. So I, I met with my team at the office and we all roundtabled it and said, you know what, um, let's do this. Let's try this one on a retail basis and see where we go from here. So I did just exactly like you see here and set up my kitchen and I did this presentation and I, you know, I, I did it for, I, you know, for, for other, other virtual on LinkedIn and other, other, uh, platforms. But when I got onto ECRM, uh, all of a sudden the list started to grow. There was only a few and it was literally a couple of weeks before. And she's like, it's going to happen like the week after next Like, Well, how many buyers? Well, I don't have a lot right now. And I'm like, well, Okay, I get it, um, but let's well, let's talk in a week. Then she started saying, "Listen, there's only five. You know, we're only going to have you know five uh, uh, producers." Um, and there became, I think it was either ten or twelve buyers. And there was some box stores in there, and there was some C stores in there, uh, and then of course some retailers. And I'm like, God, club. C store retailer. I mean, I can go to Nax in Atlanta. I could pay that fee. I can. I was going to do the NRA in Chicago for food service. We were doing the Expo for retail, and I'm like. I can get all three of these, you know, uh, of these segments in one presentation. I'm like, okay, I'm in. Turns out that we've got, uh, we have some ongoing uh, communication with some buyers uh, from the first one. And then when the food service hit a couple of weeks ago, I'm like, you know what? We didn't do NRA. We're all in. Let's do this. And uh, since Joe, I've uh, again, just like the first one, now we're sending samples and we're engaging and uh, we'll see where it goes. But uh, we are very confident that because of uh, the ESIs and ECRM and RangeMe, with all the communication through all of these, uh, all of these uh, platforms, that um, you know, we're going to continue through this and continue to add customers and, and get what we feel is uh, one of the most innovative potatoes that's ever been developed uh, into the hands of, uh, of, uh, of their customers uh, where they can taste them just like you did. That's awesome. That's awesome. And I'm glad, uh, you know, it was weird from, not weird, but from our end, what blew me away is just how fast our guys worked. Because I was literally in Amsterdam visiting uh, with our Utrecht office uh, because we have a European uh, uh, yep. sessions. And while I was there, I was there with our SVP of marketing, who the day after we landed had to come back because we made the decision, hey, we're going to launch something virtual. Everybody got together, and within a week, they had the plan in place, put it together, and just flipped the wow. switch so that by April 1st, we started doing them. And wow. we literally had a 1,000 buyers sign up across all of them in two weeks. And, wow. you know, and since we've also launched, which uh, starts this month, virtual sessions, which are going to be more like our in-person session experience, with one-on-one -on -one, uh, interactions because the ESIs are, so you'll have up to 20 buyers and then up to 10 suppliers, each one presenting, but it's a one-to-many. Wow. But now we're going to do the one-on-ones and it's a custom platform that we're using. So it's just been wow. really interesting to see how fast we were able to develop it. But really, there's Maybe. no other place to go for this right. thing, you know? So, right. but what's what was uh, cool about it is our process and our format, um, which I'm going to ask you to talk a little bit about in a second, but our process and our format lends itself to being able to make this pivot, right? The close to very high touch uh, nature of our staff and how they sure. walk you through everything. And, you know, so can you talk a little bit about how you worked with our team to kind of get ready for your presentation? Sure. sure. Absolutely. So uh, after after confirming and uh, and then uh, finalizing the agreement with Heather uh, uh, online, uh, we immediately got uh, communication from Corbin. Wow, what a sweetheart! I'm telling you. I mean, from Heather to Corbin to to Sarah, everybody through this whole uh, you know chain of of you know people on your team, man, are amazing. I get the whole script right. Uh, I mean, I've been doing on camera stuff all my life, and when I see how it's all storyboarded so beautifully it just walks you through here are the buyers that are going to be on here here's the time to log in you'll be invited in check your zoom connection check your 
audio connection. Don't worry about anything. Get your, you know, everything set up. Um, and then when we go live, I'll give you a couple, you know, I'll give you a minute ahead of that. Um, and then we go live and it, it literally was just seamless. It was like, okay, I've got the roadmap. I know where I'm going. I know what I need to do. It's perfectly clear. Here we go. And then the Q&A afterwards, um, you know, is it, it's just awesome. The interaction, it's, it, it's like being in the booth, uh, which of course everybody, I feel, I mean, there's so much energy in the booth um, when you do that. But you know what? These are changing times. And to be able to have the virtual experience and have these people on the other side, and I know I'm talking one-on-one -on -one with every one of them, uh, it, it was just seamless. And then the follow-up, uh, you know, with, uh, uh, with everybody and their feedback. Uh, that I gave, uh, you know, to ensure that everything is going seamless on both ends is just remarkable. It's, it's just so awesome. I, I, of course I could talk about it all day. Well, thanks. And, you know, speaking of booths, your setup there makes me feel like I'm with you in your space, your booth. Exactly. So talk about that a little bit. Your, how you did your pitch. Absolutely. So uh, it all starts with, uh, I get up every morning, uh, very early, I get my coffee, I have my time before all the kids get up and do their virtual school, right? Uh, and then uh, Lori and the dogs are, are still snoozing. Um, and then so I have this, uh, and it's hanging on the back wall, I get it up here, I clamp it down, you can't see, uh, I posted a picture of what it looks like, right? So you kind of see the big clamp up there. I bring in my air fryer that we do at the show that we have at the show. Uh, when we go to Max, the uh, uh, the convenience store uh, show for uh, for uh, C stores, uh, I you know I get this set up. Uh, I took a lot of these you know empty flats, right, uh, and I taped them all together so you can easily show it and not have it all fall around. Um, and then I I took these uh, and I taped a whole pyramid of to get the you know to get the brand out there uh, and just you know I, I I've done so much. Uh, you know, with, with different companies and marketing and everything and promotion, just every little thing that you can show that shows that, um, I guess the perception is reality, right? Uh, people, you know, believe what they think they see, uh, because it's all, it's all right here. They're already answering their own questions without having to ask like, wow, nice box. Uh, on the, on the back of them, we did the love story, of the Roski, as you probably read on yours, right? Mm -hmm. It's really intimate. And so we can, we can set all this up. Then uh, you, you can't really see it, but I have two of our dog uh, kennels stacked and one on top of each other. <laughs> and my, my, uh, my Mac is on top of my uh, toaster. And so I get it all set up. I get the right angle, right? Because the higher I go, the less weight I look, uh, you know, the less heavy I look, right? <laughs> I tried to put it up on the ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> yep, I, I, I hear you. In fact, uh, I put together a video interview with... Um, Someone that was, you may have seen, it was uh, available, I think, for people who uh, were participating. And it was with someone named Emily Page, who's a packaging design expert. And she works with a lot of our customers on the brand side. And, okay. But she's also been doing virtual presentations for years. So we okay. went through how to do a great virtual presentation. I, and that I was saw one of, That was okay. the link that was sent to me. Yes, yes. Uh, I saw that. She's amazing. She, yeah. was, it was, she was basically in her, uh, I think, in her, part of her house. I, I, I believe it was her bedroom or her yeah, office yeah. or something, right? Exactly. But that's, yeah, I watched the whole thing. That was awesome. Emily Thank you. was great. And you yeah, know what? Great interview. Her and you would be big. Um, uh, she would be a big fan of what you just did with the colors on those boxes because she did a column for us all about color blocking strategies and yep. you like awesome. nailed it right there. So, <laughs> Oh, we had an amazing team, honestly, to, for this to come together in a, a year ago, uh, none of this, seriously. I mean, this is, this has been on one of these trajectories, but it all starts with, I know what I don't know. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't know virtual, I don't know your company, right? But I know that Rusty uh, can benefit from what you put together. I didn't know anything about this, uh, everything about how to create it. So that's why we went to Oregon State. I could have stayed in my kitchen and just, you know, huddled myself in and said, no, I'm going to figure this out. Absolutely not. This is what I do. And I have a whole team that does what they do. Yeah. And it all gins. And that's a lot of things that a lot of times you just got to kind of get that away um, and do what you do right? Do yep. you. You surrounded yourself with the right experts. Amen. Absolutely. 
So, so uh, that was awesome. And, and um, you know, I'm glad it seemed that you made the most of this. And it looks like, you know, from our perspective, you know, this digital thing is this, these virtual meetings are here to stay. I mean, sure. Yeah. As much as I love face to face because oh, yeah. I went to 48 of our sessions last year. I mean, I love mixing it up with everybody. I'm, I'm not married and I have no kids or pets. So it's a little bit easier for me to do that. But, um, you know, so it was just after seeing what happened and now with the questions and uncertainty that's still out there, you know, right. we, and not only that on the buyer side, they're getting used to this. They're kind of getting used to this and they're starting to like the fact that, right. you know what, they don't have, if they don't have to travel as much, because I'm sure they're exactly. still going to want to travel. But now that they know they could do these things virtually, they're going to pick their spots. So going yeah. forward, we're going to have a mix. Like after the pandemic, we're going to have a mix of virtual and face-to-face. -face. Sure. But what do you see happening? What's your thoughts personally on, you know, how long this is going to go and, and what will happen afterwards? Uh, you know, we... We go, you know, I, I think we, it starts with, uh, you know, you listen to what's going on in Washington, um, but I'm in Oregon, right? And we were one of the, uh, you know, one of the uh, uh, states that, that really nipped it in the bud, if you can call it that. Um, and uh, Kate Brown, our governor, did such an amazing job, I feel. Uh, and so she's, you know, she's starting to say, we're going to relax. Um, some of the parks are open for day. Um, of course, grocery stores are open and we, we frequent, uh, you know, safely with our masks and our gloves and our hand sanitizer and our, you know, in our, uh, in our, uh, uh distancing, uh, to the different ones, the Albertsons, the Safeway, the Kroger, Fred Meyer, wherever we go. Um, you know, we don't see any, you know, we see in, in spikes in grocery because that's what people are doing. Um, but what I see is the relaxing. I, I, you know, that at some point there's going to be shows, it's going to open up, but it's going to look a lot different. I feel right. Um, the mass amounts of people in the hallways and in the aisles and everything. Um, you know, will we do that? We'll take a look at that. I don't think we're not going to do it. I think we will. And I think it will be structured in a way that makes sense for both producers, uh, you know, suppliers and buyers. Uh, and so, you know, we're open to that as long as, you know, everybody's on the same page. We're not in a rush because we're listening to everybody else. And I think when I said, I know what I don't know, I don't know that either, right? So that's all we can do. But as we see numbers go down and, you know, reopening and, you know, uh, slow to come up uh, happening, I'm the, I'm the constant optimist. I'm ready when everybody else is ready. But you know what? While we're doing that, uh, what virtual has done has taken this and brought this anywhere we want to be, in country, out of country, because these buyers are watching this. Producers like us are doing this. Um, and guess what happens? Hey, can you send me some samples? Sure. I send them the samples. I explain how to produce them or how to prepare them. I send them our uh, company information that explains how you do it in C stores, right? How we would, you know, the, supply the hot box, how we promote it up here and show what we can do with it, right? Um, how a grab and go would be wonderful. How, you know, air frying in your own home or in a demo session, um, you know, whatever that's going to look like when we're back in retail doing demos, because that's where Lori and I, I mean, absolutely blow people away. Every single time we do a demo, the whole store sells out. Uh, they're calling the distributor and then all of our samples sell out. I mean, it's just, it's just that kind of a product. It's so exciting. I, I, you probably can't tell, but I'm excited about it. Uh, and then, you know, I, so I can be into any region about talking about, you know, I, I can, you know, I can be talking to you about what's our food service pack look like and what does that look like? And, and, you know, what's the minimum order and, you know, what does that look like on side of plate or at a ballpark, uh, you know, for grab and go, uh, what are some side sauces that you would prepare or you would pair with that? Right. Um, what does that look like? Food carts all the way through, you know, airlines, uh, you know, our raclette on, uh, on, you know, first class and we're working with a, a major airline, uh, you know, that uh, could possibly be doing that. Um, it's just, you know, the virtual is not going away. And I'm not going to say if I had my druthers either way, I think there's room now for both, uh, you know, and because of what, you know, what you've done and your company's done so brilliantly. And I'm, trust me, I follow everything that's going on with range me and ECRM. Um, you know, I love these platforms. 
and you guys do it absolutely the best. So we will continue to do this um, and then see what happens throughout. But I absolutely believe that this is not going away. This right. is absolutely like we're not we're not out of business. We're in business. I'm in my I'm in my shorts and flip flops. <laughs> 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 but you know what that's you know there it's not about me it's about this you know exactly this, this, uh, this crispy, crispy filled potato right that just has never been done before uh until we did it so that's yeah what's no that's right. great that's great and it's you know what i think you have the exact right mindset and view and you know this has opened up other opportunities you know for for example you know even forget about the pandemic you know this what this virtual has done is enabled us based suppliers to pitch to buyers and distributors in europe because oh, we're God, having yes. them over there i just talked to somebody on the general merchandise side who has a pet uh, a tick remover product for pets and she did our pet esi here and she's doing our pet virtual session in july but tomorrow she's doing our pet esi in europe because they have you know they they go international and she said you know, she would never have the time to travel to a show in Europe. Right. But because we have the virtual offering, she sure. can, you know, and, and so it made me realize that in these ways, it's going to have those benefits beyond. The same thing for European suppliers that maybe want to get in over here. Well, now they could do it and not have to travel because going to Europe, that's a big time investment compared to sure. traveling Absolutely. here. Oh, so it, done it. Absolutely. it opens all kinds of doors. And so we're going to have a mix of both right? the ESIs, the virtual sessions and the in-person sessions throughout. And like you, like you mentioned before, you know, we're category based. So we have all channels that are looking for products in that, you know, you'll see the c stores, you'll see the, you know, uh, food service, you'll see the, uh, uh, big box retail all together because your product is relevant for all of them. So you can knock them all Absolutely. out in one shot. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that lends itself when you talk about international, right? The last one uh, or the, fir the first one uh, that we did for retail, um, uh, we're engaging with, with Canada. Um, you know, this would be an absolutely perfect product in Canada as well. Uh, and so we're already engaging with some distributors and some large stores up there. Um, because of what they saw here uh, in all the social media and everything else. You can target it. You can find you can find opportunities that may have been on a radar or may be on a radar, but maybe not for you know a year down the road. And all of a sudden we can be in C stores. Uh, and if Max isn't happening in October, I hope it does. I mean I hope everybody, because that's work and that's you know it, it, it just we all want to get back to work right mm -hmm. um if it doesn't or if it doesn't on a different scale or if we can get in front of you know c stores uh for the grab and go opportunity um you know uh it's you know you guys can put it together and you know we're on board you can target stuff that you know we can do in a week that we couldn't get all done in a year that's where i'm going with it and it's so exciting that's a great point actually it's uh the speed that you could get it done. You don't have to ship things. You don't have to set up. It's just do it from your setup right there. And then exactly. you can follow up with the samples and, and all of that. Absolutely. So that's Absolutely. really great. So, well, really, thank you so much. This was, I knew this was going to be a fun interview. <laughs> and, uh, you know, congratulations on your success already and uh, the innovations that you've come up with. Uh, they're delicious. And now the only thing I need is one of those shirts afterwards. <laughs> I'll get you a shirt and make sure that you go on. You, uh, uh, you know, now this is. Uh, I'm going in for the baked potato. If you haven't done it yet, uh, I'm telling you, it's uh, it's the it's the crowd and family pleaser, man. The baked potato has the uh, the sour cream, the cream cheese, the chives, and that cracked pepper finish. It's absolutely delicious. I suggest that next, and then maybe Sunday as you're sitting around, uh, go with because that raclette cheese, we actually import it from Switzerland. Uh, it's actually, we refer to it as the classic because a classic rushki in Switzerland has, uh, has uh, raclette cheese uh, melted all over it. We just happen to in one where we insert it and put it in the middle. Ah, okay. So you know what? I'm making, a, I have a steak taken out already for today. So I'll do the baked potato. Oh, oh my that. gosh. You've got to do a baked potato. Yes, I will do that. And then uh, I will try the other ones towards the weekend. <laughs> Sounds great. Thank Joe, you again. Cheers to you and cheers to everybody. All right. Uh, take care and stay right. safe. You too, buddy.